So those were just a few of the things that we printed and I'm gonna show you this in a second, my favorite print so far, but I wanted to go over a little bit of the printer itself. So first off, coming up at the front, we can see the hotbed. The hotbed is removable. When the print comes out here, you take it out, then you can move it around so that the print comes out pretty easy. Down here, you might not be able to see it, but that's the nozzle where all the filament comes out and then the proximity sensor right here along the side. Coming along the side of the printer itself, we can see the filament holder with a spool of filament. Coming up here, we can see the filament that goes right into the extruder. The extruder has the filament tube right over here and that tube runs up into the printer itself. And then coming over here, we can see the screen over here that gives you all the stats and everything on what you're printing. Over here, we see the TF card slot with a TF card on here. The printer includes this and it has a bunch of prints you can do right off of here in case you don't have a computer or anything to connect to it at the moment. And then the knob right over here that allows you to go through the printer itself and actually select different things to print, set up and all that good stuff. Wi-Fi as well. So then coming along the side, we can see the USB connection where you can physically connect the USB cable from here to your computer, or you can use it on your computer through Wi-Fi, which is how I do it. And then the power connection that of course connects to the wall. Now again, I connect it through Wi-Fi on my phone with the included Polo Print Cloud app that you can use by scanning the QR code up here. But through here, we can go into the Tina 2S. We can connect locally because we're inside of the Wi-Fi zone. Or if let's say we're at work and we wanna connect through it and it's through Wi-Fi, we can connect remotely. But since I'm here, I'll connect to the printer here. We can see that the printer is 100% operational. The last job we finished right up here, we can see this little guy right over here and we could have paused it, we could have stopped it. It tells us right now that the bed temp is 20 degrees Celsius. The nozzle temp is 19 degrees Celsius. And then here it shows us that print job, how long it took, 32 minutes, 19 seconds. Over here under control, we can see a bunch of the different features and functions for the printer, XY axis, the XYZ axis, the level, and this already comes all level and everything. It's basically built already completely when you take it out of the box, which is awesome. File, as I mentioned that TF card, these are all of the files that come inside of that TF card. So you can print directly from here or you can print connected to your computer. And then right over here, info gives you some information about the printer itself. Now I'm gonna show you real quick how I printed this. So on a PC, we need to utilize WeBuilder for slicing. Once we load WeBuilder, we'll click on the Wi-Fi connection here. We'll enter the IP of our printer and then we click connect. After it connects, it gives you all the information here and then you're able to adjust the X and Y axis, the Z as well. And it gives us all the information right up here. We're also able to upload prints, but I'm gonna move on from that just for right now. Once we've loaded that 3D model and we like it, we can move it around around, we can adjust the height and the width and the length and everything. And then after that, we can slice it. So what slicing is, it allows the 3D printer to know what this 3D model is and the 3D model to know what the printer is. So if someone designed it with a different printer in mind, now we can bring it into this printer and it's able to tell us all the temperature. And then over here, we can see that it will take one hour and 22 minutes to print, tells us the filament and all that information here. So that's incredibly important. You have to load the 3D print and then slice it. So then after you slice it, you come back over here into the Wi-Fi, then you click upload. That uploads that 3D print and then it gets it ready to print on the printer.
So then you can just pull it out, lift the magnetic tray that's everything stuck on. Just kind of sort of peel it off by bending the tray. You can hear the crackling. Okay. Even though they were part of the same print, they're separate. So I kind of aligned them within the software and then you can just peel it off that base and you can peel it off this base. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work right off the bat or if I need to peel this stuff off, but it's a little rough. Oh, but it goes in. And I'm okay with that roughness because that means it's gonna stay. All right, so that's all the way. Just gotta peel off all this fluff. And that's, that's pretty awesome. So let's try this in a system real quick. I'm gonna use this on the Intel Arc B580 graphics card. And uh, I don't know if it's going to sag, but it's better to prevent the sag. That's so awesome. And then you can adjust it here. And if you're good with AutoCAD and the likes 3D modeling, you can make your own and that is awesome. While I didn't make that 3D model, I did download the 3D model and I printed it off of that Antina Tina 2S printer and I made the GPU sag bracket as you saw before. It's awesome, it's a money saver. The printer is incredibly affordable. I had one of the original 3D printers way back in the day, it was over $1,500 and it was incredibly complicated to set up the levels, to set up all the different stuff. This came right out of the box, already assembled. I just had to take off little pieces of foam and then it just worked. It is amazing. It took me less than five minutes to set everything up. It worked amazingly well. So we printed this guy and then we also, well, we printed everything, but the last one I printed was this little model here. I asked, hey, what should I print? One person said, print this. One person said, print this. And it's awesome. Thankfully, everything worked great. You saw me print off of my desktop through Wi-Fi. It connected great. And then we also connected through the cell phone as well. And everything worked great as well. I printed this little hand from the software right on the cell phone then i printed this little guy directly off of the screen there with the tf card as well and then i also downloaded groot and i prepared them on the wii slicer like we did the gpu mount and this printer does amazing mind you this is a learning printer to make it easy for people that have never printed before but it is incredibly powerful and if you want to sand it down you can make it look even nicer like the same with any 3d printer i think antina did a great job with the tina 2s and check out the links down in the description below if you want to buy one so I'm going to be using this in my budget build. If it's up, it'll be right up here. You could check that out. And if it's not, it will be up here soon. Anyway, this is Iggy with This Bytes For You showing you how to print and everything so cool off of the Tina 2S 3D printer. See you guys.